Good morning, everyone. Welcome to today's live stream. Uh, my name is Olivia O'Connor. Really happy to be here with you today. Oh, I can remove that now. Um, we'll be following on from last month's continue to carve this wooden knot here. Just whilst we wait for a couple of people to join, I will show you this as promised. Last month, somebody asked about carving Australian timbers. On my Instagram, my most recent post that I did about an hour ago, if you're watching this live, um, I just did a few projects from the last few months that I've done from Australian Timbers and labelled what those are for you. And this is the only one that I own. <laughs> the rest are long gone and sold. This is a heron bird carved from a golden wattle uh, branch that fell off in a storm just down the road. I used, the branch was sort of this shape I use the same soaring and splitting method that I showed you in last month's live stream where we started carving this knot here and here it is here ah uh, hello thank you so much for your hello I'm a little more set up this month because I have an iPad here so it's a lot closer so hopefully I can read your comments but the font is tiny and I've lost my glasses. I'm slightly terrified. I've left them at a client's house that I visited a couple of days ago. But fingers crossed, maybe I just need to clean my living room and have a proper search for them. So this will show you what you can achieve through splitting. And yep, this is Australian timber. And this one was greenwood carved, which means the timber's still a bit wet. So, but when it dries, it can sort of um, twist and crack a bit. But I'll just pop that out the way. Also, those of you who have been following along each month, um, you'll know how excited I am to show you that I'm in my shed, really excited. I am praying that the internet that we've had connected to the shed works. Uh, it's made my morning a little more stressful because I had to, I don't live at my studio, so I had to drive over here. Um, so just adding an extra half hour or so into my day getting ready for you guys. And I'm not the most technical as all of you would be aware, but this is my new clamp rack. So I thought that's a fitting background for a woodworking video. So if anyone has any questions at any time, just pop them into the chat, please. And we'll get cracking. So this is the, sorry, I'm just gonna check that you guys can, I don't know where to hold that for you best. The screen I'm looking at is on a 13 second delay. So it's incredibly infuriating, um, but I hope I'm holding that in the right spot for you to see what's happening. This is the knot we started carving last month. I have done nothing to it. I shoved it on a shelf and left it alone. Today I did carve, I didn't carve. I got out my red texture and I just defined those lines. So I've done no work to this except for remark some of those lines um, to help me see a little better. And as per last month, I have my very clean dog toy because the dogs haven't been allowed to play with it yet. But that little knot up the end is my reference. Um, I find when carving like a bit of a complicated three-dimensional shape, a three-dimensional reference, even if it's not the same size, is fantastic um gosh a couple of years ago now I think I had to carve a big honor board for a winery had all grapes and leaves and everything on it I actually bought bunches of plastic grapes to help with that so you can really sort of we all know what a bunch of grapes looks like until you have to carve a bunch of grapes and then it all just goes out your head um so three-dimensional references are always good so let's get going on carving this. I hope I'm holding that in the right spot for everyone. It's a bit hard for me to tell. Carved out the red lines. So we are gonna just power through and finish this today. So I better stop just gibbering on and get carving. First of all, I'm gonna start by defining my deepest points. I'm gonna get my large V tool, clamp that. In. Um, and for those of you who don't remember, this is cypress pine. So I'm just using a feel uh, 15.8. 
my go-to V-tool at the moment. Now, because I can't actually anchor my hand onto my work here at the moment, I'm sticking my elbow into my hip. My right leg is bent and my left leg is quite rigid. And I'm using my body as my anchor here. Not always the most ideal, but see, now I can anchor off the work. Sometimes you gotta improvise. Because not every position is an easy carving position. Get some of these while some around here. I just hope that by the end of today's session, we actually have a functional looking knot and not a um, strange hybrid knot. I'm just going to use hand pressure here because this would be a bit awkward for me to mallet away. Again, that twisting, each twist is a separate cut. I've had a few people recently send me messages asking about carving. Of course you're asking about carving. Asking about sharpening your carving tools. So next month, there's many, many ways to sharpen your carving tools. Next month I'll be showing you how I sharpen mine. So that'll be a bumper of a stream. Now, as you can see by the size of the bits I'm pulling off, I'm being quite aggressive because I am aware of the time constraints. And it has just started pouring rain and I'm in a tin shed. So I'm hoping the little microphone I've got set up only picks up my voice for you and I'm not going to be drowned out. That should be clamped a little tighter, but we will carry on through. Just going to look incredibly awkward for a moment there. So I just came around a corner. Just thinking, thinking, thinking. Got a question. You nearly forgot about this. I'm so glad you didn't. It makes me really, the project or joining in on the live stream? I really enjoy having regulars tune in on the live stream. It's fun. It's like I'm getting to know you guys. And something else really cool, I ask for it every month, but it's only just started happening. Um, some people have started sending me photos of stuff they've been carving through like tips they've learnt doing these with me. So that is really exciting. So this piece, this is where I'm not quick enough to carve and think and talk. This piece curves round and up through there. So I need to remove a lot of this area here. giving a little wiggle because I'm not feeling super confident with my shape. I should be, but I'm not. So I'm just taking it a little slower. Basically giving myself some thinking room. That connects to that. The sound is good. Oh, Thank you. I was just about to say it to sound good. And you know what? Next month I'm going to have my glasses so I won't be peering down like that. And then there'll be no stopping us. 
Now I'm going to have to look at my little model here. Oh my gosh. Okay, so the bottom there comes up through here. Let's get bashing. And rap the sound is behaving because I can hardly hear myself over the rain. It's all right. That's why I had a drive at nine o'clock last night to go and buy a microphone when I realized the rain forecast. These are problems I didn't face in the house, and I thought it would only get better when I started carving from the shed, but. Here we go. I'm really, really pushing hard into that. I reckon this is a little dull, which it shouldn't be. But next month, we will be doing sharpening, so that'll help. Maybe I'll leave it dull for a month. And then I can show you guys how to sharpen something that's really blunt. Okay, this goes under this, which means that needs to drop down. Got a little number 512. It's about at this point that I'm thinking I should have just carved a relief knot where you could only see it from one side. And then none of it would have to join. That would be a lot, a lot easier on me. So where would the fun in that be? So this, this piece goes under that piece. All right. Now, of course, when you guys are carving, you'll have that template on my website with the knot from every angle. help and I'm finding one of our saw lines from last month so it's really good it's giving me a really good indication of exactly what I need depth wise you can see just how far things are out okay just gonna use a smaller V it's number 12.4 just to create my first groove up through here. Thank you for everyone saying good morning. That's really friendly and cheerful of you. Moving some of this waste here, but remember, I'm still trying to keep a fair bit of it on. Anchoring into my hip. Keeping a lot of this on so I can clamp it. Oops. so I can just visualize a little better. I keep telling myself all I actually have to do is just remove the bits that aren't a knot. So when you think of it like that, gosh, that's simple sounding. So this is what we're getting. That side is far more developed. Um, I've developed a bit of a wavering thickness of rope. If I wasn't under time pressure, that would probably really upset me and I would really try and neaten it up and keep it all consistent. But for today, because I really want to finish uh, in our hour or so, 
I'm just going to ignore that and it can just be a squishy rope that change size. That will be fine. So we've got this piece coming around here, feeds up into that, which means that all of this here is waste. I'd love to be able to clamp it on the angle, but I'm not set up for that today. And what I might try again with my Soras that I showed you guys last month. Try to cheat a bit of carving by using this. What I love about these is because they've got such a hard edge, you can kind of really use it. I'm just going to lower that a bit for you. You can use that hard corner to really lock in and define. Because I'm using pine, cypress pine, that is a soft timber. So it is cutting really nicely. But as I showed you guys in some walnut last time, it also cuts your harder woods really well because it is just like a thousand little saws. That's my favorite part about it. You just knock it and knock all the waste out. Now, when you're carving, in the round, which we are today. You don't just carve one side and get that great and then try to carve the other side and make them match. You will have no end of troubles, as I have learnt from bad experiences myself. So this side is way more developed than any of my other sides. That is going to only give me issues in time. So I'm going to try and... My urge is to keep carving that side because it's the most clear to see what's happening, but I am going to force myself to keep it moving and work on the other sides. This piece here actually flows through and becomes that piece. I'm really going to have to cut that in quite tight and hard if I want it to look anything like realistic. I hope you guys can see I'm still, even though I'm going quite aggressively, I'm still using that same slicing motion. A little cut. I think I need a mechanical clamp. This whole bit here, way too high. So save myself some effort. I'm going to rasp that off. Good question. Yeah, I know what you mean, Simone. Simone said she wishes one of these rasps had two handles. Um, I use them a lot when I teach rock and horse classes and I always say to people, bring gloves because you do have, whatever way you're using it, you do have your non-dominant hand resting on the blades. So if you're not used to it, you can really sort of just scratch up your first layer of skin. What I really want is them to make a rounded one where the blades like spiral out. So if there's anyone out there who wants to jump on that, I would be really happy. <laughs> Okay, we are getting there slowly. This needs to come up here. I'm going to pencil it in and then I'm going to texture it in because I want to make sure I'm getting it right. Looking at my little dog toy. 
So that's that side that comes all the way up there. And that comes, that goes like that. Okay, we are getting some shape. Drawing some arrows so I can mentally grasp what's happening a bit easier. Rounding off this section because it ended up quite square because we started with a square block. Now I don't know if you'll notice but all the teeth are going that way. So I'm actually only applying pressure on my downstroke. I'm just letting it glide back on my upstroke. Otherwise, that's just a waste of energy and effort. Ah, thanks for that fix it fingers. Please get on the case. So this piece. I'm going to have to look at my guide again. Okay, now I know what's happening. Do any of you believe me? Now this is a hold you may not have seen me use before. This is gonna be very uncomfortable to get in. If I didn't have this camera set up here, I would probably be able to just swing around the desk, but I can't. So I'm just holding like this anchoring off sort of the underside of my little finger side of my hand and it's amazing how much grip you actually have doing that now i can turn to more of a conventional hold both probably conventional Wiggling that up to give me greater control. Wiggling it down again for control. This goes under that, so I'm going to drastically drop that height. Now, I don't want to mallet in that stop cut here today. So I'm just giving it a wiggle because I am using a softwood. It's a bit more of an option. Really help me create some form of a shape. Now, the question. Oh, they do have raspberry two handles. That's cool. The things you learn. Thanks, guys. I've got a tough piece of grain here, so I'm just going to give it lots of short and really exaggerate my sweep. So this piece here goes up through there. So let's really make it sit down it's really applying a lot of pressure and rocking that I do 
do feel like today I'm making this look a lot harder than it is. So I hope that's not the case. <laughs> All of you watching. I personally find this much of an exercise in 3D, I don't know what this is, 3D visualisation um, rather than carving at this stage of the game. Because the knot is a complicated shape. It does twist and curve through itself. And we are making something that started out as a square block of non-twistable material behave for us. So I'm seeing here it's getting very thin, so I need to remove a lot of this tail up there. I'm going to use my rasp and just hack into that. Suggestions or things you'd like to learn about for future live streams, please let me know. As per a couple of viewer requests already, uh, we're using rasps, inner carving, and next month we'll be doing sharpening. So there's many a way to sharpen, and I'll just be showing you the way I sharpen. But that should still be a bit of fun. And I would like to tell you all, sharpening is not as difficult as many people like to make out. You might be surprised to know, but I actually probably not surprised given the shape of that larger V tool this morning. Um, but I hardly sharpen my tools. I usually strop them, which is on a piece of leather, because I don't like sharpening very much. But it is an incredibly necessary part of wood carving. Let me just look at my reference knot. Wrong way. Okay. Trying to make this side look like a smoother transition. I'm wondering if I even need to get my drill out and just I'm gonna make a tiny tiny hole somewhere because it shouldn't do that. Ah, oh, thanks. Ryan, let's hope this <laughs> let's hope the sharpening class is interesting. It'd be awful if you all said this is very boring. B8, yeah, sharpening is <laughs> necessary I can explain to you the different way different um, carvers sharpen their tools and the different shapes people get on them as well 
You can see here we're starting to really round out our shape. So I'm really letting that rasp cut in and trying to find some corners for me. Do not put your rasp down on top of your carving tools, otherwise they will definitely need some serious sharpening. I've learnt from prior mistakes. So we've got another question, guys. Oh, you can hear the rain. I hope it's just like a soothing rainforest calming track in the background, whereas I feel like I'm shouting <laughs> to try and speak over it. But hey, that and all the technical difficulties we've had in the past, that proves that we are very much live, doesn't it? <clears throat> Hopefully if everything that goes wrong is just one thing that can't go wrong again. Uh, this is one of my favorite tools here, a 7F10. So number seven refers to that sweep. Now I'm really shouting for you guys. Uh, so number seven refers to the sweep or the curve there. The F is a fishtail, so it gets wider like that. They're great for getting into corners. And 10, 10 mils wide. I'm just going to come here and really fit in that inner curve. Do my clamp up properly would help everybody it gets a 3f6 same deal just smaller and just work into that Give that a wiggle as I come up around here. Now each wiggle, each wiggle is a separate cut. I think you'll really be testing it if you can hear me now. For those of you who maybe joined a little later today, um, last month we had a question about Australian carving timbers. So if you're watching live, um, if you go to my Instagram or Facebook, Olivia O'Connor Carving, the most recent post is just a scroll through of some Australian timbers I've used recently. So yes, there are Australian timbers that you can carve with. Excuse me. I've got splintery grain here, so I'm just going to do... I'm working bevel side up. Remember we learnt about that in the Christmas beetle carving episode. This is why I don't understand people who can carve sitting down because I find I move around so much and like this, sometimes you're kneeling on the floor as well to get the right height happening. But hey, some people do great carvings while set. It is nice and soothing. Thank you. Really twisting that. The more I twist it, the shorter and more exaggerated my slicing motion is going to be. So really, and that wiggle, that's just a cut there. Because the one thing we do want is the grooves between where the rope is crossing to be really defined. 
because otherwise we're just going to end up with a really sloppy mush of a carving. I'm just having a quick look at my reference. I think this is a bit high here. Here we go. We're getting there. Might be feeling a little slow, but I promise we are getting there. Okay, thinking, forever thinking. Really using my body weight to twist around there rather than just using my arms. That's two scoops, so now I'm moving on to a 3F. You can see it's got hardly any paint or marks left on it because it is my absolute favorite tool and I use it constantly okay wiggling that small V tool again each wiggle is a separate cut coming down from a Above. Going downhill is much easier. Might just be faffing now. That's the trouble. I always just get caught up in it. And forget I'm meant to be talking to you. So you can see the front side of that knot is really starting to take shape. Back side, that needs a lot of work. So I'm not following my own instructions of constantly rotating. I told you it was really tempting <laughs> to just get stuck on one side. And I think I've just proven my point. I'm going to have to really sort out this back section here now. Um, Otherwise, I'm going to be in a bit of trouble making things join up. I'm trying to figure out how to clamp that so you all can see. I hope that's it. I would ideally be carving everything on this side. Um, she wouldn't know what was happening. around that bend there. Really being aggressive now. If you haven't done so already, uh, if you're watching this video, it would mean a lot to me if you guys could just give it a quick like and even subscribe to the CarbTube uh, YouTube page and then we can keep bringing you videos like this. Okay. This is all waste. So I'm going to remove that little chunk. We can bevel side up and I'm really just slicing through this timber. 
You can see I started to dig my corners in. That's not ideal. When I grimace like that, you know, it's probably not going as smoothly as I'd like. Just moving those very top fibers there. So this one comes down and through here. I'm just gonna round this. <laughs> It's going to be a little funny looking from the back side, this knot. Oh, thanks to those of you liking it. That's very sweet of you all. Oh, no worries for your late entrance. Whenever you are free to join, please join. And if you don't make it live, you can always watch it again later. I'm really trying to define this line here. It needs to be quite deep. So I'm using quite a lot of force. I'm anchoring with my forearm here because I can't quite get my ball of my hand on. And I'm wiggling. Remember, each wiggle is a separate cut. It gives you a lot of control as I come down like that. Coming around here. Trying to shift that line slightly over to make this one look a little fatter because I've let it get very, very thin there, which I shouldn't have. Wiggle, 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 wiggle. Now I've started to get some shape there. I'm gonna round this off. Like you now know, it is a lot of backwards. See, I'm slicing that round. That's to keep. Same as that very, one of, maybe not the first, but very early lesson we did on grain direction, where we looked at doing a slicing cut. I'm doing the same, but with the bevel side up here. If you really want to push yourself in learning wood carving, or even if you don't want to push yourself, you just want to enjoy it, uh, understanding grain direction is the, oops, the only tip you need, really. Once you've got that under control, it'll just click one day for you. coming up and really twisting that blade because I'm trying to come around that bend there really inelegantly. I'm going to really tighten this up because I'm going to come in there like we did on the other side. I'm just going to wiggle it so it doesn't shift around in my vice too much. A small earth and just push straight into that stop cut. Okay, we are getting somewhere. Which is good because I'm sure you all didn't want to sign up for a five hour video lesson today. Although, where you are, if it's drab and rainy, maybe you do. up this edge. Is it going to make it? Yeah.
There's my little area right there. Okay, we are starting to look like we have some shape happening. I hope that's in the right spot. Be able to see. Side I've worked on the most. Best side. As I keep saying, but not keep doing, constantly rotate your work. Looking all right. Looking not so good. You're really fat here, really thin here. I'm going to try take some of the top edge of here off but because I've been foolish and overworked this side where I couldn't see that I've not left myself enough here for the moment I'm just going to live with that for the purpose of today and getting through a carving the wood slips in the vice Steve hates just spraying there's a little water that's a cool tip did not know that thank you very much um if you guys didn't see that someone's just said your tender slipping in the vice, you can spray it with a little water. So, I've not heard that before, but I can imagine why it would work. So, I think I will give that a shot. Thank you. Now, if any of you find yourself um, tackling these projects or other carving projects, I'd really love it if you could share them with me. I think that'd be really cool. You can shoot them to me via Instagram or Facebook or tag me in them. Might be the easiest way. That's back to front. So this. This comes behind that. Okay. I do hope this is riveting viewing. You don't just feel like you're watching a woman who doesn't know what a knot looks like. Go backwards and forwards. Wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. This is so thick here, and this is so thin. I'm actually going to try and trim him down a little bit. Cutting that wall a little shorter. Oh, awesome. I'll just show you what I did. really need like seven cameras set up, don't I? This one here was looking really thick. And the wall was there. So now I've just moved it over to here. Just to add a bit more depth to this. Still need to take a fair bit off the top of this. Try and balance out how skinny I've let that section become. Got another It's great. Thanks very much for your comment. It's great to see the knot taking shape. Also interesting to see how you feel carving. Feel the carving. Oh, am I? Hadn't, hadn't realized I was doing that, but I guess I am because the way it is. Now I'm incredibly self-conscious. That's all right. That's all right. Let me mark this out again.
that really needs some work to make this look believable. Okay. I've only said it a thousand times, but now I'm finally going to remove some of the excess from this one. Just going to pop down and cut upwards with that. Why am I cutting upwards? Because the teeth are running that way. It's a really comfortable position. getting thinner and thinner. Okay, let's have a look. Give me one second, new comment. You wear the slippery slope of rework and touch-ups. At some point you have to be happy with it. Thank you very much, Tony. I do agree with you. Yes, at some point you do have to say, I'm done, but I'm not done yet. We'll be done very soon though. So you can see we are getting some shape. Now that was a good side and that was a bad side. So that bad side is really taking shape. I just want to take away some of this here. Maybe if I was wearing my glasses. Be a lot faster, who knows? Just look comfortable for your knees. I'm actually on a rubber mat, so it's not bad at all. Was just going to ask how you know when to stop. Um, that's a tough question. When it's done, is the answer. Um, I mean, it depends. Sometimes I stop for the day when I've had enough, when I'm quite often, even if I have had enough, I've got to keep going. But there are some jobs, like with the rocking horses, I'll only ever put the eyes in at the start of a day. Um, definitely never, never in the afternoon because I really need to be focused to get those in the right position. Just trying to round this whole thing out for you. You can see we are slowly, slowly getting there. I think it's time to remove a lot of this area. And I think we are just going to attack that with the rasp and see what happens. Ready? Yep, don't want to go any thinner there. Remove this top side with that same tail. Ah, thank you, Fix It Fingers, Ugly Mouth. That is a Instagram reel I made. I am ashamed to say Ugly Mouth was a morning carve because I was I made a very ugly mouth 
and um, carved a little very ugly mouse. I think he's still on the bench floating around somewhere. Is he? Oh, yep. This very unattractive uh, creature here is a, supposed to be a mouse. Complete failure. Um, and I made a fun little video of him and put that on Instagram just to show you all that even as a professional woodcarver, you can have terrible days, terrible, terrible days where you carve something truly ugly. Like that mouse. So long as I can give you guys some sort of shred of hope and trust in me as we carve this, I'm all right. See, I'm really rotating that tool to use the edge. Oops. Throw it in. Look how we're going. I've gotten very skinny, but that's all right. That's all right. This is just an exercise. I'm just going to come over it, the whole thing, and I've really got to be careful leaning on that because now I've got that really thin there. So I actually might start anchoring off my body rather than the work. I say as I anchor off the work. Just going to come over and remove all those saw rasp marks. Now I'm not going to fully get this perfect for you today I'm afraid it's going to take a lot of fussing around but you will definitely be able to see the shape we have and that we have a knot I think we're so happy you guys carved your own knots as well but I will definitely be posting this finish on my social media for you to have a look at and I'll bring it next month as well. In here. Can you see how much I'm twisting because I got so thin there? Might have got a bit excited there. If I can shape this away without breaking it at the moment, I'm going to be happy. It's all right, like next month's sharpening will involve less mental effort <laughs> from me. So I think we'll get a slightly more coherent Olivia talking to you. Just want to come along and remove those rasp marks. Really trying not to put a lot of pressure or weight on the carving. Because I let it get very, very thin. Wow. 
larger to cover. Here the grain changes direction slightly. So I've got to constantly change direction with it. But watch that grain direction video and you'll know exactly what I'm on about. Have to split out the back there, but that is okay. We are nearly there. Alrighty. Just gonna. I just don't like the saw off marks, but if you did want to sand it, it's quite good to go from the mask. The excuse me, the rasp marks. The sandpaper. Maybe that's what I should have done. I'm not sure yet. If I want this a faceted knot or a sanded knot. I think you'll be able to see it a little better if it's not fuzzy. Oh, I like that one. Yeah, this week, this week you've all got to carve mice, but I don't want ugly mice. I want very cute, happy mice. We have a project in mind involving some mice. But believe me, nobody will want ugly mice. Oh, the sun's come out. Beautiful. We're finishing up soon, so if you've got any questions, now is the time to start popping them in the chat. Here you go. We are looking a little rough and ready. We're at the stage where it's gonna be a lot of, just a little more knife here. It's going to be a lot of little faffing around on this. And as you've said to me before, you've got to know when to finish. Um, yeah, there'll be a lot of faffing around, getting that, cleaning that in there, getting that really nice. Um, those of you who were really interested in rasp use, you can also... Little files could be great. These are metal files. They work on wood. You know, you can really sort of get in. Well, that's a round one. I might prefer to use something with corners. Let's think of that. To really create you know, a bit of a harder line in there it can also be great for cleaning out the bag especially if you've got something you're going to um sand I think I might sand this I think I might sand it so yeah so if I'm sanding this guy he's pretty much Don't worry, I'm not going to cut into my own hand. Let's just remove some of that. As a rule, the only time I cut myself is when I'm doing live demos in front of people not in front of the internet and that's not even when I'm carving it's usually because I'm explaining something like this with a gouge in one hand and nothing protective on the other so there you have it I think that'll do for today you can see we definitely have 
be three dimensional knot. It is still a little rough and ready in some places, but from this point on, it is literally just picking at it with a knife, getting a bit of sandpaper. I've got a bit here. Getting a bit of sandpaper in those corners. Yeah, I think I will sand it. It's coming up nicely. Of course, once you've sanded it, you can't put carving tools back on it. Otherwise, you are going to have a battle when it comes to sharpening. Sandpaper really dulls your carving tools. So from this point on, I'm only going to use sandpaper and files. Oh, and maybe it's all else. But there you go. I will be putting him on my social medias soon. Let's hope I finish him this weekend for you all to have a look at. Um, was there any last questions? Oh, thanks, everybody. I really enjoyed presenting to you. I hope, I hope this looks good. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, please like this video, subscribe to the channel as well. That'd be super useful. Let's everyone know that, you know, you guys do enjoy these videos and I'll be able to keep doing them. Uh, please follow me on Instagram and Facebook at Olivia O'Connor Carving. That'd be great. Uh, I'll wait around for just a couple of seconds in case we've got any last questions. If not, I will be signing off. Uh, thanks, everyone. It was a really fun class. I hope it's looking <laughs> not too mangled. Next month, we are doing sharpening. So if you've got any interest in wood carving or woodwork, sharpening your own tools is a must. And I'll be showing you a few easy tricks to do it well. All right. Hope to see you all then. Oh, sorry. One last Mike Davis, a Kiwi carver says go from short to long fibers. Is that something you agree with? When you're carving, so you mean like across to with the grain? I assume you mean, I'm not quite sure. Or do you mean when you're, it's easier to carve? I don't know, actually. If I don't, I don't think I quite understand that question, I'm afraid. Ah, oh, thank you. Cool. Perfect note to end on, me getting confused. All right, everyone, I hope you have a lovely weekend. Any questions about this down the track, please just pop them in the comments of the video and I will check that regularly and get back to you. Thanks, everyone. Bye.